So today's lecture, um, I know that in the syllabus, we said we were going to be looking at calculations this week. Um, decided to take a departure from that a little bit, um, just because I think there are some other things that after getting to know you guys a little bit more and your skill sets and what you want to make, um, there's some other things that I think will be more useful for you. So instead, we're going to be talking about dashboard design and formatting and really getting, now that you know kind of how to put together your vis vises and how to make sheets and how to get the charts you want, um, we're going to go into how to put them all together into something that looks really, really great. Um, so to start out with, I kind of just want to explain the differences um, and some kind of basics about around dashboarding. So the first thing I want to talk about is how there's really like two different kinds of dashboards. Um, so there's exploratory dashboards and there's explanatory dashboards. And they have different purposes. And based on what kind of dashboard you're making, you're probably going to want to set it up in a different way. So an exploratory dashboard is something that you're not trying to necessarily make a point. Um, you just have some interesting data, and you want people to get into it. Um, so when you're making an exploratory dashboard, you're going to want to use a lot of interactions. You're going to want to make something that people want to click on. So an example of an exploratory dashboard would be something like this. Um, so this is a dashboard I made on the history of drum scores. I think I showed this to you guys before. Um, so there's not really like a point that I'm trying to make with this. There's not. I mean, there are some things that you can learn from it, like how the blue devils win the most and that kind of thing. But it's really more about I want you to click on these things and learn about these drum cores, and that's it's more about getting someone to interact with it. Um, in contrast, an explanatory dashboard is really more about um, trying to make a point and trying to get something across. Um, so I have a really good example of this one. Um, this is a super, super simple, simple dashboard. dashboard. This is kind of just to show you that an interesting dashboard doesn't necessarily need to have a lot of stuff in it if the, if the data itself is interesting. So in this dashboard, we were looking at um, movies, and we looked at the length of how long a, char a movie title was in characters. And then we compared that with how long the movie actually runs. And we just saw this interesting trend of there's been this, like, way, like, a huge drop-off in the length of movie titles in the past couple of years. Um, but there's also been kind of a spike in the length of movies. So, you know, this is a very explanatory dashboard. We're saying titles are getting shorter, movies are getting longer. There's the trend for titles. That's how it's getting shorter. Here's where the movies are getting longer. So that's, that's, an an explan that's, that's an explanatory dashboard. dashboard. So, so when, when you're thinking about what the goal is for your dashboard, uh, that's, that's a good, good way to think about it. it. Are you trying to explain something, or you just want people to have access to this data and make it kind of their own story? And based on what you're going to do, um, there's different ways to kind of encourage those kinds of actions with things. Um, so if I was going to go through and kind of say, like, which of these are kind of my explanatory dashboards versus my exploratory ones, one thing you'll notice is that explanatory ones, like, for example, the CXC one that I made, it's really just one viz. It's, it's usually a lot more simple. And there's a rule we like to talk about at Pablo uh, when making explanatory dashboards and anything that's going to be used for decision making or really getting a point across, and that's the five second rule. You should be able to just glance the dashboard and get a general idea of what's going on. So if I was just to look away and look back at the dashboard and I see what music matters most, I see a very clear title, what do they play the most, and I see Arcade Fire at the top. It doesn't take me very long to understand that Arcade Fire is the number one band on this radio station. So that's something you want to do with an explanatory, with an explanatory dashboard. You want to make it really as simple as possible, and you want people to narrow into that point that you're trying to make. Um, so another version of this kind of thing. 
So, so this, this is a dashboard, dashboard I made when I was looking at people, people who were selling tickets to Sasquatch, Sasquatch Music Festival uh, last, last year. It sold out really quickly. And, and I wanted to see how scalping was going to work and what the prices were going, going to be like that everyone said. You know, it sold out every way because everyone was trying to buy tickets on you know, the second market. And people were saying, oh, just wait, just wait until a week, week before, before it happens and prices will drop a ton, I promise you. And, and I, I wanted, wanted to say, I don't think that's true. true. So, so I straight trade book and, and I looked through, through and this is kind of my destination. You know, and I put the line graph first because that's the most important part of the information. That's the thing I want you to see first, the thing I want you to consume first. So I have another chart down here of just circles and you can click on these and see so, so that, that if you're interested in, like, why did food offering, offering that for so high? Oh, it's actually three tickets. tickets. That's why it's so high. But um, at the same time, it's on there, there so there, there could be a little bit of exploration with the data set. set. But really, because this was the main point, I put that front and center, and I made it the most important point. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about that and kind of the differences in how you would set up a dashboard for these things. So... When, when you're, you're talking, talking about a dashboard and what, what really works, um, um, and what, what makes people understand your dashboard, uh, thinking through how you want a person to interact with your dashboard is huge. Um, so, for example, let's uh, take a look at a, let's say that I've been working on this dashboard. It's about baby names. Um, there's just a number one baby name in each state. And I've got a couple different sheets here. So I made one that I in just in Alaska and Hawaii. I've got a bar chart here. I've got this is how many different names were number one each year. So you can kind of get an idea of there are years where there's not a lot of unique names because there's only one name in 1965. Then there's years that there are more. You can kind of see an upward trend, like a trend towards more diversity in baby names, in number one baby names, rather. And so, and so maybe I've gone through, I've decided, yeah, these are the things, things I want to show. show. So the next, the next step is really, how do I want to show them? And what's the most important thing? And how do I want people to interact with us? Um, so one, one thing that I find is really helpful when I'm at this stage, I've done all my data exploration, I've come up with a couple of views that look really cool. Um, the next step is really to figure out how I want to lay it out. And often, the way I do this is with pencil and paper. Uh, I will draw out a square that's approximately how big my dashboard is going to be. And I'll start planning it out. I'll just draw, like, okay, that's where my bar chart's going to go. That's where this is going to go. Um, I like drawing it out a lot because it gives you kind of a guideline of what it's going to look like. Um, so. That's, That's just what, what I do, of course. There's lots of other people who do lots of different, different things. But I find that drawing it out really, really helps. And I actually have a, a whole file folder here just of all of the sketches I do of dashboards. Uh, just just that, that I show people kind of in person when I talk about this method that I do. Because I really think it helps you lay out a dashboard that's really cohesive. Because sometimes it can just get a little crazy when you're, you keep putting things in. Uh, another, another thing to think about when you are building dashboards is how much stuff you're actually going to put on it. You know, there's sometimes when I create, I'm playing with a data set and I find eight or nine really interesting ways of viewing data. And it's not going to happen because your dashboard's only so big and you can only fit so many things on it. Um, in general, the rule I like to follow if I don't like putting more than three different views on a dashboard, um, and this is something you'll notice if you kind of go through a lot of my dashboards online and like on my website, um, it's not every day that I'll make something like this that has a lot going on. Um, and you'll see the only way I can do that is by making something really obnoxiously big. But for example, when I made the PHP one, so I made a small one that was kind of my explanatory dashboard, got right down to the point. And there's a little bit of an exploratory aspect to this because there's the interaction of, well, I can also see what the number one album is, or I can also see what the number one song is. Um, so there's a little bit of that action going on. But for the most part, it's pretty simple. And then I had, when I made this, 
When I was playing with all the KXP data, there was so much more that I thought was really, really interesting, and I wanted to show it, but I knew that I shouldn't all show it. If I showed everything on this one dashboard, it would take away from the story of this one. So instead, I made more dashboards. And, and I kind, kind of divided them, them into a way that, that if, if you're, you're going, going to put things, things on a dashboard, dashboard they should be things that are related and things, things that make sense, sense for them to go together. together. So, so then, then I made more of a, of a like a KEXP explorer, as I like to call it. it. So it has kind of the same line chart. Uh, or the same bar chart at the top, top of what was the number one artist. This, this time you can see I kept, kept it all one color. I didn't divide it by DJ. But you can still filter by DJ. So if I wanted to just see DJ Altura here. here. And, and then, then what you could do is use it as a way of, um, you can get more information about when they play that. So I want to see who is this man, Kitchens of Distinction. When does he play him? And what does he play by him? So, so these, these are all these three things, things that it makes sense for them to go together. together. Now, in contrast, contrast, I had another, I had some other charts here that were more about when they play, play music. So even though they're, they're still from the same data set and they're kind of related to those other topics of who they, they play, they don't necessarily fit in with what was going on in that dashboard. So I made another dashboard. So this is the third one that's really who they play and when. So you can see when they play the most songs, there's these valleys here, which is because it's a public radio station, they have punch drives, and they play less music those weeks. And then I made these sheet maps of what DJ plays the most music. So you can see the darker oranges are people who play more songs in an hour than others. And then who they play the most by hour. So for any hour, you know, if you really want to hear LCD sound system, you should listen 5 o'clock on a Monday, that's when they're going to play them the most. Um, so that's, that's kind of an example of, I have probably, this, this is not even, even all of the charts I made for this, with this data set, but you've got to narrow it down and really think about, um, think, think about each, each dashboard as its own little piece, and, and you, you can, can deliver, deliver multiple dashboards in an article. article. I do it all the time, like in this blog post, for example. Um, but sometimes it'll just be too overwhelming to put all of them in one dashboard at a time. So really kind of focusing and figuring out what's the story I want to tell with this particular dashboard. So with this one, I wanted to say who the number one artist and song and album was, and I wanted to show how different DJs have different tastes. So this one, I wanted to do that, but also I wanted you to know what they're playing and when, a little kind of a little bit, like you know what day they play it. And then for this one, I wanted to tell you just kind of overall aggregated statistics about how much music they play and when they play certain kinds of music. So that's uh, a little bit kind of getting into that stuff. Um, another thing, thing you'll notice, notice about these dashboards is that the thing that is really, um, you, tr you have to try to think through the actions of what people are going to do. Um, so, for example, in this one, we have the top artists and songs. Um, we, if we want to know something down here, we click up here. So this, so this makes more sense, sense than if I put this top artist chart below these things and, and you click up. And you, you click, click down, down here, here to change, change something up here. That wouldn't make as much sense. Um, because, because people read left to right and top to bottom. So you, you really want your actions to move in that direction of going left to right, right top, top to bottom. You always want to try to keep your filters and things in a place that's really prominent. And often it helps to just call them out, like making a little arrow and saying, click here to see this. Um, that's something I do often with my dashboards. dashboards. So if we open up this here. Yeah. All right. Um, so often it helps to get a little bit of instruction on what to do. So this is one example where we're kind of just, just right, right there in the text, text, you can add something that says use the slider to flip through the year, so click on a circle to do the filters. Um, and sometimes, sometimes you don't have room for that, sometimes you have a lot of instruction you need to give. So there's a little trick I like to do um, where I make 
a little hover menu, menu that you, that you click. click. So here's, here's one about Pokemon. Pokemon. You can see there's this Pokeball, Pokeball in the corner, and it says hover here. And when, and when you do that, that the tool tip pops up. up. And, and what, what this actually is, is just an empty sheet that I made a custom tool tip in. And I can show you guys how to do this um, if we have time today. And if not, I can make a little link to it because um, it's been written up about before. Um, but, but that's something, something I actually, for a while there, is kind of obsessed with doing that, that and especially doing it with kind of the funny themes I'm digging in. So there's my, like, little ghosty one, one and I am kind of joked that you would just say hover here, you hover here. Or, um, another one, here. Or, um, another one here. So this is just a good way of kind of giving someone a not, not everyone's, everyone's going to know, know how to interact with a Tableau is right away. Um, so, so doing things, things like that, that, trying to keep people from having to think too hard, hard and making it as intuitive as, intuitive as possible, um, something you're, you're going to want to do. If so, so kind, kind of recapping up till this point, point um, if, if you're making an explanatory dashboard, Try, try to keep, keep it as simple as possible. Try, try to make it follow the five-second rule. Someone, Someone should be able to get the point you're trying to make just by glancing at it for five seconds. Um, design, design with the interaction of what you're doing in mind, and that's especially true for exploratory dashboards. You want to be able to guide people through the exploration of the dashboard. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what it's like to do these kinds of layouts. Um, so, so, going, going back, back to my baby names data set here, I have all my things made up and I want, want to put them on my dashboard. dashboard. So I'm, I'm going to make a new dashboard, dashboard is the first thing I'm going to do. And the, the first thing you should always do, and I know I've been telling you this since, you know, day, day one, but it's, it's important, important to don't forget, forget it, um, is to figure out how big it needs to be. So I know that I can't make anything bigger than 800 width. So I'm going to make it that. I'll make it 700 height. I really recommend that you always do exact sizing with your dashboards. Um, I know some people um, have, have concerns that their publications are both on the web and mobile, and they want something that fits in mobile. Um, so they try to use range. But the thing with range, um, the range means that you can set it's going to be a minimum of this and maximum of that, and it'll kind of pick the size that fits best, best based, based on, on the screen, screen size, size of the person, which, which is really, really powerful, really cool. cool. The, the problem, problem is if you're making something really designed, um, it, it kind of gets messed up. So, so range works great if everything, everything you make is all just stacked on top of each, each other, nothing on the right or left, um, then, then it can work. But, but it's still kind of iffy. iffy. What I really recommend you do is to make two different sizes of your dashboard and to show different ones based on what their screen size is. And um, we can talk more about that offline or at office hours um, if anyone has questions about that and kind of how to set that up with their IT people and their CMS stuff. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to go back to do my exactly sized dashboard. And maybe, let's, let's say, say I haven't sketched this out, so I don't know exactly where I want to do things. things. I'm just going to start dragging things, things in. in. I think um, this the name trend, trend or the number, number of names, names per year is a really, really interesting thing. thing. And I think, I think it kind of, since it's an overall view of what data is doing, I think, I think it makes sense to go on the top. Um, but what I really want front and center is the U.S. map. No, that's, that's really kind of the main key to this. You can see it's already starting, starting to bring in all of my filters and all of my legends. Um, so I have one here for all the names. I don't really want that in here. It's not that useful because all of my all of these colors already correspond to it being labeled over here. So it doesn't really need to be here. And I advocate for saving space whenever you can. So I'm going to get rid of that. And, and I'm, I, can I can keep dragging, dragging stuff, stuff in, maybe, maybe I'll drag Alaska out and Hawaii out. So I know a lot of times I get asked, um, what do you do when you, when you have Alaska, Alaska and Hawaii here and your map looks more, more like this? this. And, and it's hard to read and you really want, want to focus there. What, what I do is I will make three different maps, one that's focused 
just, just on, on the US, US so I'll, I'll use, use my, my little magnifying, magnifying box, box here in the map controls and draw a box just, just around, around the US. US. Say, okay, focus, focus on, on that area. area. And, and I'll do the same for Alaska. And I'll do the same for Hawaii. And then I'll have three maps. Um, and I can put these wherever I want. And I'll show you kind of how I'm going to clean this up in a second. Okay, so let's just start with that because it's already looking pretty busy on the dashboard and pretty full. And there are some things I can do to save some space. The first thing that's happening here is all these things at the right side, first of all, they're taking up a lot of space that they don't need to be taking up. And there's this huge amount of white space here that just doesn't look very good to me. So we're going to try to make these floating so that we can save some space. So if you remember, the difference between floating is that instead of snapping to the grid like this, we'll be able to just drag it around. And I'm going to change that by clicking on the drop-down arrow, selecting floating, and ta it floats. So this color legend for gender corresponds with these two lines. So I'm going to want to keep it somewhere around this graph. It wouldn't make sense if I put this down here because people might not know what these colors are in reference to. They're like, wait, are, I thought I'm only looking at girls' names right now. What do you mean gender? So put that over here. We also have a gender filter over here. And I'm going to make that floating. This is a filter just for a map. So I'm going to kind of keep it with our map here. And then we have our page controls. And I know a couple of you have asked um, if you I've forgotten the page. I know it's kind of is a drag because it's really fun to watch these automatic page controls go. Um, but we can't. We, if we publish on Tablet Public, public the page controls um, with the automatic play button will be gone because of the um, basically the way that server works. It's not going to work. So just to kind of make this look more, more like what it's going to be. I'm going to uncheck the controls there. I also don't want to show the history controls um, because that doesn't, it's not really relevant when you're showing a field map. You can't see the history. Nothing. Everything's just changing over each other. So now I'm going to make this loading as well. Oh, I got a question here. So I have a question about what these dotted lines are on my graph. Um, any guesses? That is correct. Um, these are trend lines. So this is the average, um, the, just the trend line. And the way you make these, is by right-clicking on whenever you're on a line chart, or you can do this on a standard plot, um, you can right-click on it and go down to trend lines and just check it. And you can edit what kind of trend lines you have. So right now, I just have a basic linear trend. Um, we can try some different trend models here, see if they fit the curve a little bit better, stuff like that. Um, I just want straight lines. So, so I, I put, put those on there to show that there is a general um, increase towards names. But you can see one thing I thought was pretty interesting. One thing that I thought was pretty interesting was that the lines of the males, you can see the slope is just a little bit deeper. So there's a lot more diversity for boys' names and girls' names just in general, but it's also rising faster. So when, when you add the trend lines, they'll automatically kind of look like little dotted lines in the background, and they'll usually correspond to the color that you have it there. Um, you can, when you edit them, you can decide how you want them to be broken up. So if I didn't want it to have gender rules, I could uncheck gender, and so now this is just the general trend for all names um, is this black line here. Um, we, we can also add confidence bands to say like how much the model is sitting. Um, this is not like a super statistical topic, so I don't think it's really necessary. It also 
starts to get a little cluttered when you do that. Um, and we, we're trying to go for simplicity, right? We're trying to make this easy to read, so I'm going to take those away. So once, so once again, again, to make, make the trend, trend lines, you just right-click right -click on, on the back of your, your line chart. chart. So, so you do this once your line, your line chart's already made, you just check, check trend, trend lines. So without, without the trend, trend lines, lines, that's what my graph looks like. I go to trend, trend lines, I check it, that's, that's what it does. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, I skipped that. Um, so next, we're going to start thinking about maybe proportions and what we want to do with this. This is taking up a lot of space, and I don't think it's that important that it needs that much space. I'm going to push it down a little bit. Um, another thing that's taking up way too much space is Alaska over here. I know it's a really big state, but it doesn't need to be that big. Um, one thing that I like to do when I'm making maps like this, and I have a United States and, and I've broken, broken out Alaska and Hawaii, and Hawaii is actually to float these ones and, and put, put them kind of in the corner of the United, United States. States. And, and you'll, you'll have, have to do a little, little bit of kind of maneuvering, maneuvering when you're doing this. So um, you, you can, can use your zoom, zoom tool on this one. Hit, hit, hit the square zoom that draws, draws the box. box. And draw a box a little bit of extra room over here. Or you can click and drag so that you have a little extra room in the corner. And then I'll make these smaller so they fit more in this corner. Well, already that's looking a lot cleaner and better. But I still feel like there's just a lot going on here that doesn't need to go on, on here. There's, There's a way that this could look a lot cleaner. cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. One, One of those ways is we don't, don't really, really need this background map stuff. Um, so, so the United, the United States, States is already pretty much gone because, because we have a build, build map. So I do this, this most of the time when I'm making build maps. I don't, I don't use the background map at all. The way we do that is by selecting the back, so we select the object that has map in it, and then we go up to map and map options. So um, we, haven't we haven't talked, talked too much about, about map options. I think I, I might have touched briefly on this in one of the lectures. lectures. But, but you can actually change what the map looks like behind here. here. So, so the, the default, default is this kind of gray, washed out map. map. And the color stands out on it a lot better, and it's just easier to see things. things. So we, we also have, have like kind of a standard map where the ocean is blue, and you can see a little bit more of the land cover. And then we have a dark map. This one is really great for if you're doing if you're, you're doing, doing like, like circles, circles on a map, map you really need the colors to stand, stand out a lot, lot better. Um, so that's, that's a good option for that. that. But I'm, I'm going to go back to the gray map. And you, and you can see there's all these options for things we can put on it. We can put some land cover. We can show the streets. Um, we can show borders. I really don't want to show any of that. I want this map to be completely blank. So what I'm going to do is there is this slider here for washout. That means how pale do you want the map behind it to be? So right, right now, now this is the darkest, darkest the map can be. If I still want like, like a little hint of the map, map but it's just not as prominent, I can bring up the washout maybe to 50%. But, but if I don't want the map at all, I can just push the washout at 100%. And now, now there's, there's no map behind it. And, and I can do, do the same thing, thing with Alaska. Put the washout all the way there. The same thing with Hawaii. Put the washout all the way there. So, so now, now we just have the shape of the states that, that were drawn because we have these outlines of the states because it's a build map. And if you see, it looks a lot cleaner. Uh, another, another thing, thing I, can I can do to save space, space is I'm going to get rid of these titles. I don't really need them here. So, so whenever, whenever you're working in Tableau and, Tableau and you're like, like you see a thing on your dashboard, dashboard and, and you're like, I want to do something to that thing. How do I do something to that thing? The answer almost 100% of the time is just, is just to right-click on it. So I see a title here, and I'm like, I don't want that title. I right-click on it, and I can hide it. Um, so, so if you're ever kind of trying to remember how to do something on Tableau, first thing you do is check the drop-down. So there, that was an option, too, because title is here, and I can uncheck it. So that's the first place to kind of check when we're trying to figure out how to do something. The second thing is by right-clicking. So, so once, once again, again, I can hide the title either by clicking on the drop-down and unchecking title, 
or I can just right click on the title and say hide title. Um, another thing I want to hide are the zoom controls because I spent all this time placing my map very particularly and I don't want people to really be able to zoom in and out. So I'm going to right click on the map. So again, I'm kind of just thinking through, uh, so I want to change something on this map. What do I do? You right click on it. And I'm going to say hide students controls. And I'm going to do that for all of these. And this doesn't necessarily keep people from being able to zoom. Like you can see, I can still grab this map and move it around. I can still double click and zoom in. But it does make it so that those controls don't pop up. And you don't get um, people accidentally playing with it. So I'm going to reposition this so that makes a little more sense. Um, I want these controls here for my filters to be more at the top because, like I said, people read top down and left to right. So I want things that require action to be in the top left. Then I'm going to move my states down here. Um, whenever you're kind of working on a map of the U.S., it's good to practice to put Alaska and Hawaii more in the west because that's where they actually are. Um, just, just a little good best practice thing. Sometimes people like to put Alaska above and then Hawaii below or something like that. Um, either one, perfectly fine. I like to put them next to each other. Cool, well, and now, now we can, can flip, flip through, through here. here. Now, now, you might notice, notice that my maps, maps don't, don't have any boxes around, around them. them. I already took away the boxes from them. them. I know I that, that when you guys are building dashboards, dashboards um, you, you probably see them. So let's talk a little bit about the formatting menu and all the things you can do with that. So I'm going to right click on this and say format. And, and every type of sheet has a format menu. menu. Uh, and, and from, from here, there's, there's a couple of different things, things you can change. change. One, One thing you can change is the font. So if I want to change it, and now everything is written in Arial, I can change this to maybe I want it in Cambria. Maybe I want it in something else, like, like Futura or something like that. that. Um, do, do keep in mind that, that the way fonts, fonts work in Tableau is um, they, they only render if that font is on the person's computer. So there, there are some fonts that are web-based based, and some that, that aren't. Um, if, if you guys work on the internet, internet very often, I'm sure, sure that this is kind of review for some, some of you. But let me show you something really quick here. here. We, we have, have an article on our Tableau public site. So if we go here, let's take a second to bring this up. So if we go to the Tableau public site, you go to best practices. Um, this has a lot of really good information here and a lot of things to help you as you're starting as you're continuing to learn about data visualization. And um, here under formatting, we have a section for fonts. And, and here I've kind of gone through, through um, and said, said you know, these are the fonts that work really well, and these are the rules to follow when you're doing fonts. But I also have this this year. These are all the fonts that are available in Tableau Public. Um, anything that's in black is something that is based on both Windows and on Mac. Um, anything that's in red does not work on Mac necessarily unless they have that, that font installed, installed on their computer. So like so a comparison table, table here of what that, that above, above is looks like. like. So, so just think through that if you're starting to play with kind of different, different fonts, think about which ones you can use and which ones you can't. Um, I just keep this page bookmarked usually so that I can like go back and see. Um, you might you notice that on a lot of my visualizations, um, like if we go back here, you'll see fonts that aren't necessarily fonts that are on that list. So for example, in the Hello Kitty one, you can see I have this kind of cutesy font with these little hearts on it. The way I did that 
is actually, actually that all of these, these are images. images. So, so I made images just in PowerPoint, basically. I installed this onto my computer. I typed a little thing in PowerPoint, and I took a screenshot of it and cut it out. And that's how I made these. So these, I can't change the title of it unless I make a new image. Um, but, but you can, you can see, see I did take advantage of a different, different font that, that is available on both Mac and, and PC, and that's Comic Sans. Um, you're probably not going to be using a lot of Comic Sans when you guys are doing hard hitting data journalism, but um, this, this, was, was, this is about Hello Kitty. I think it was mildly appropriate. appropriate. So that's, that's how you change some of the fonts. Um, that's an, this is kind of the easiest way to change all of them in one is really quickly. And you'll notice it only changed it. For this US map, maps do even get on the main bar. I have the name tag over here below that too. And now we're kind of add to the kind of part. It's like a block. Another thing you can do, and it's not another thing you can do, and it's not something that people do more and very much anymore now that it's floating. But there are some things that it's useful to do, and I can send out a, I can send out some information on cool things you can do with this. You can see there is these things that say horizontal and vertical. So these are called layout containers. And the, and the layout, layout container is a way, way for you to kind of, kind of group things, things together. So, so let's, let's say I wanted, wanted this bar chart, bar chart and, and this name trend to always be next to each other. I'm going to get, get rid of it first. And I'm, I'm going to add, add a layout, layout container. So it's a little, a little confusing, confusing to think about, but just think about the way that the picture looks. A horizontal layout container means you're putting things next to each other, left to right. A vertical layout container means you're putting things next to each other, top to bottom. So I want, so I want them things to be next to, be next to each other. other. So I'm, so I'm going, going to put a horizontal layout container, container here. And right, right now it's a blank, blank space because there's, there's nothing in here. here. And now, and now if, if I try to add in that bar chart, chart put it, it in. And if I try to add in the name trend, trend over time, you can see it's putting it within that box for me. And now this whole section kind of moves at one. So if I was to... Um, and, um, and if you, if you ever, ever want to select, want to select the, the entire layout, layout container, container, you, you click on the drop down, down and say select, select layout, layout container. container. Now, now, if, if I, I wanted, wanted to make, make these two charts, charts float, float together, together, I could, I could click, click the drop down, down of the container, container and make and the make whole container, container float. float. So now, so now these are kind of grouped together. So that's something you can do using layout containers. Layout layout container again. Again. But I don't actually want it to float. You can, you can see, see if I put my layout container to the right, right of the map. map. When, I, when change I change the size of this, instead, instead of just changing, changing the size of the bar chart, chart it's, it's changing, changing the size of the entire layout container. Layout container. So, so it's, it's really, really having them act kind of as one entity. 
So if I want my layout container, container to actually go to this, I'll select, I'll select my layout container, container again, again by clicking the drop down, down and I'll, and I'll go, go to the bottom. Move some things, things around, around a little bit. bit. And I don't want my map to be a little bigger. bigger. And um, I, find I find that when, that when I'm, I'm kind, kind of laying, laying out, out, when I'm laying, laying out, out my, my, my dashboard, I'll do a lot, a lot of turning, turning the zoom controls on and off, off kind, kind of trying, trying to figure, figure out where the, where the best place to put things, things are. are. I really want to be as big, big as possible. There, there we go. go. Now mm -hmm. I can put this one, one down here. Mm -hmm. And I can put this mm -hmm. one over here. Uh, another, another thing, thing I, I like to do when, when I'm thinking, thinking through, through Dashboard, and you're trying to get, get rid of scroll bars, bars whenever you see them. Sometimes, Sometimes you make things too small, and then there's a scroll bar, bar, and that's just not very attractive. Okay. So let's, so let's get back to the formatting format menu. So I'm going to right click, click on my map, map and, and I'm going to go back to format. Um, so, one, one question, question that I get from people a lot, lot and something that it actually took me a very long time to figure out, is when you bring in Anything, anything on your dashboard, dashboard. It, it almost, almost always has, has a box, box around it, like, like this, a border. A border. Um, how do you, how do you get, get rid of that? that? The, way the way you do it is by right-clicking right -clicking and doing, doing your formatting menu. menu. And then, then so we've, so we've already gone over formatting, formatting font. font. There's, there's also some text, text alignment, and we'll get to these other things. But there's a selection for borders. And this is a little complicated, and I actually don't really like, like the, way the way it's worded, and I fight with Tableau, Tableau people, people all the time, time trying to get them to change this. Change this. Um, but, but we don't, we don't really think of these lines that are acting, acting like, like a border. They're, they're not, not actually a border. border. What they are is a way of dividing the columns and rows. And um, so, so row divider, divider and column divider, divider that's, that's actually, actually what's controlling those borders. So if I go to row divider and pain, I say none. And you can see the top, the top and bottom, bottom line is gone, but we still, still have the ones on the right and left. So I'm, so I'm going, going to go to the the column, column divider, divider, and that, and that gets rid of those. So, so especially if you're, if you're doing, doing things with loading, it's very, very good, good to get rid, rid of a lot of, of those lines. Sometimes, Sometimes you might, might want to keep them. For example, I kind, I kind of like them when I'm doing a line chart like this because it contains everything in the chart. But when I'm doing floating maps, not as attractive. All right, right. Some some other things, things that you can do with the format menu, menu. Um, change, change how, how text, text is aligned. Um, this, this is really, really more, more for if you're working, working on a table and you, and you want things in your column to be centered, centered or to be to the right, right or to the left. left. Um, alignment, alignment helps with that. that. You, you can change, change what direction your text is going. So, so if, if I was to do that on here, it could make my text go up and down. Keep it. And kind, and kind of position it, it differently. I don't want, want it less aligned, aligned or centered. centered. Um, it, doesn't it doesn't make too much of a difference, difference on this map, map here. here. But, but um, like, like I, I said, said when you're working tables, tables, it often helps. Uh, um, another thing you can do from here is change the colors of sheets. So if you probably noticed on some of the examples I've been showing you, So, so on some, on some of the examples, examples that I've been showing you on my profile, profile here, there are a lot of them that, that aren't white, white in the background. background. Um, so I do, I do a lot of, if I, if I use a dark map, map I, like I like to make the entire, entire dashboard dark, dark so that it's not as jarring. jarring. Or, or sometimes, sometimes I like to play with colors, colors a lot, like, like maybe making the Pokemon, Pokemon one bright, bright yellow, yellow because some kind of the color is Pokemon, Pokemon is yellow, yellow and blue. Um, and sometimes, sometimes you can even do things, things like, this is a dashboard, dashboard I made on data, data from Rate right right My Professors, and, and it uses a chalkboard in the back. And, and the way I did this was by changing the color of all the items here to match the color of the chalkboard in the back. So to change the colors of your sheets, 
what you want to do, do is go, go to your formatting menu. menu. Once again, you do that by right, right clicking and doing, doing format. format. Um, so I'm, so I'm going, going to click on here. here. I'm, I'm going to say format. format. And, and I can, I can go, go to the color, color and, and it's called format, format shading. shading. And, and I can pick a color to make, make this. And if, and if I don't, I don't like any of these, I can also say more colors and pick any color I want. So if I wanted this whole dashboard to just be like light pink in the back, let me add this to the custom colors here. I could do that. It would be pretty ugly, so I'm not going to. But that's totally an option, and you can do that. With, with all, all of these things. things. So you, so you can, can also format, format filters. Um, so you right, right click, click on these. these. Mm -hmm. You can so see, see this filter, filter here. here. I can, I can format, format my legend. legend. I can, I can make, make this even a different, different color, color if I wanted it to stand, stand out a little, little or something, drop boxes, boxes around, around it, um, add, add a border, border around it, maybe. So there's lots, lots of options, options here, here that you can do. Um, and sometimes, sometimes it's nice to do these kinds of things, of things so that they just don't, don't look so standard for your, your data business. So the last so thing we have, have here is about, about lines. So, so this, this is um, really, really only applies, applies to you when you have, have things like, like this line, line chart. But this, but this is how I can change what my lines look like. So Right, right now, now my trend lines, lines are, are these kind of big dashes. I want something, something a little smaller. smaller. You can do dotted lines. lines. Maybe, Maybe I can make them thinner. thinner. Actually, Actually, that, that looks, looks a little better, better, I think, when they're thinner. It's a little, little less distracting than you guys think. But I'm, I'm not going to keep it that way. way. So I can also change the red lines. Like Maybe I want them to be a different color. Or I want them to be lighter. So there's a lot of things you can do there. I can also change what the rulers, axis rulers look like. So if so I, I wanted, wanted to really, really highlight that X, Y axis, axis, I can, I can do, do that as well. All right. So, so um, any, any questions, questions about, about formatting, formatting with us before, before we move, move on? on. Okay. okay. So, um, let's talk about other things, things you can do to make, to make your dashboard look a little, look a little more customized. Um, so something, something that probably saw when I was showing, was showing my author profile, profile stuff, stuff is, is kind of heavy uses of, of images, images and especially of making, making kind of, kind of these headers. headers. So, so um, you'll, you'll see one here. here. I have kind of this. Banner here. here. And, and you'll see a lot of that kind of thing. Of thing. Um, not, just not just from me, me but from, from a lot of, of journalists. And some, some of them kind of start to develop their, their own style. style. So, so if we go, go to Journal uh, Public here. here. And, and um, this, this is the day, if you guys aren't following, following it yet, um, there's a really good thing, thing to follow. Because you'll start, start to see other organizations that they use it. And You'll see, You'll see how, how they, they kind, kind of have developed, developed styles. styles. So, so um, this is my, my friend, friend Sarah, Sarah Riley at New York Daily, Daily News. We've worked, worked together a lot in the past, and kind of I helped her get started. started. And, and she's, she's really developed, developed kind of this style, style of what, what her thing things look like, like, where she does some kind of big, big bold, um, big, big bold like header, and really calls out a lot of numbers. And she likes to make custom legends like this. That, that also, also works work as filters. filters. The way she does that is similar to you, um, before, before how I showed you guys some tutorials about how to make, make some kind of buttons out of icons. icons. That's, That's basically what she's doing here. Instead, instead of using, using custom shapes, shapes she's just using, using a square. So it, so it kind of serves dual purpose, purpose because it's also a legend. Um, so, so she starts, starts to do a lot of this kind of thing. And you can see these black boxes, those are going to be images. So bringing in a lot of images. 
definitely help help if you have have someone someone in your organization organization who does does a little little bit of graphic design design and and they can help make stuff for you. If If not, not, um, really really easy easy way to make make kind of your your own own custom custom entry level level kind of stuff like like this is just just to open open up PowerPoint PowerPoint and and just to make make, um, little little titles titles and things things like that that and take screenshots of them. A lot lot of people get started that way. That's how I got started making kind of custom graphics until I started learning how to use more like Photoshop and that kind of stuff. But that's a really easy way to do it. You don't really need a whole lot of special stuff to make a good good looking looking header. header. Sometimes Sometimes it just helps helps to have, have, you know, know, a little little bit of your own kind of branding in it. So another thing she does is she'll put like the Daily News logo and link it out to New York Daily News. So that's easy to do. All you do is drag in an image. So I wanted to put one down here. Let's see. Let's see what kind of picture we can put in here. I have a lot of them. So for, so, for example, example my KXP one, one, I have their, their little KXP logo. logo. Much, much smaller, smaller than that, of course. And, and for, for any picture, for some point, you can make this fit. You can, you can always set, set a URL. URL. So, so images, images can basically, basically work as links. So I can, I can make this go to KXP. I want it to. So I recommend, I recommend you do that, that with all your visits to put, put kind of your publication, your publication logo in the, in the corner and link, link to it. That, that way, if someone shares your pub- shares your biz, like on Twitter, Twitter or something like that, that um, they'll, they'll know who made it. it. So that's, that's always helpful. helpful. So that's so one thing you can do to make things, things a little bit more customized looking. Um, another, another thing that I wanted to show you guys how to do, because I did have a lot of questions about this, after, after a couple, a couple lectures, lectures ago, is making, making kind of the dynamic, dynamic titles. Um, so, so I've done, I've done it here, here in the other dashboard I built with this data stuff. Let me move this over here. Um, so, so you can, can see, see over here, here I have a title. That if, that if I, I click, click on a different, different name, name, this, 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 this is, is only showing a name that, that I clicked on, and the title changes. Um, so, so these, these kinds, kinds of, of, I like to do this a lot when we're making call out numbers. numbers. That's, that's how people like Sarah Riley, Riley at, at New York Daily News. Um, that's, that's how she makes, makes things like this, like this where, where it calls out the number, number and it changes while you click, click through it. it. Um, and it seems a lot more complicated, complicated than it is. All you have to do, make a new sheet. And in this case, I want to say whatever the name is and say like trend or that name. So the, so the first, first thing, thing I do, I do is, is I put, put the name on, on text. text. So there's, so there's all the names that it could be. And then, and then what, what I'm going, going to do is click, click on the text, text button. button. If you, if you click, click the little, little ellipse, ellipse here, 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 now you, you can edit, edit this text, text however you want. want. So, so I, I can make this um, trend for the name. And now it says a trend for all of them. And then, and then you're going to say just one thing. thing. Basically, we're, we're going, going to add the filter. So I'm going, I'm going to, to put this on the dashboard, dashboard we're making over here. here. I'm, I'm going, going to hide this title by right clicking and saying hide title. title. And I'm going, going to put that new sheet, sheet over, over here, here on top, on top of this. Oh, oh. <laughs> I forgot that we have a layout container. I'm going to put another layout container in here. And then I'm going to put this one and that one. And then I'm going to put this in there. Oops, oops. I'm going to name this. All right. All right. And, and you can see it has, has this ellipses because it's trying, trying to show us all, all the names. We don't, we don't really want that to happen. So, so what I'm going to do is add my dashboard, dashboard action that filters, that filters it. it. So, so I'm making, I'm making a filter, filter action. And I, and I want, want the bar chart, chart to filter, filter the name, name trend, trend over here. here. And then, and then sheet, sheet 8, which, which is where my, where my title was. I want, I want to do it on select. select. And, and I want, I want when you when clear, you clear the section for it, it to just keep, keep the filter on. Because I don't, I don't want all those names to pop up again. So I'm just going to say leave the filter. If I hit OK, and hit OK. Now, now if I click this, this let me make, make this fit the width here. It just says trying to marry. And, and I'll do some stuff, stuff like, like get rid of that, that get this bigger. bigger. And, I and I can click this, and for Michael, and for James. 
That's how you make dynamic, dynamic titles. titles. Um, you, you can really, really it's, it's a very, very similar, similar method, method to do that, that for dynamic, dynamic images, images or you want, you want just, just one thing, thing to pop up, that, that's how you do it. All right. All right. So, um, so um, one thing we didn't, we didn't really touch, touch on too much, much uh, we should, should be talking, talking about design, design is color. Is color. Um, color, color is a tricky, is a tricky subject, subject because there's a there's lot, lot of intricacies in what goes, goes into it, it and, and a lot, lot of different, different opinions that people, that people have, have about, about it. it. Um, so one, so one thing, thing to think of is what your theme of your dashboard is and if there are colors that make more sense than others for it. So, so you'll, you'll often see if you're, if you're making something about, um, you're making something about, about like, like jobs, jobs or something involving money, money. You'll, you'll see a red-green red, green color scale, scale. things going, going from red, red if you're in the red, the red. Um, so, so if you're, if you're losing money in green, green if you're, if you're making, making money. That's, that's a common color to use, and it's good to do that because that helps with the five-second rule. People are going to think, oh, green, that means more. But, but the tricky thing, thing is, because, because there are so many of those, those kinds of color scales that, that people think of green is more than red, or, red or, or things like that, if you, you use them in ways, ways that, that aren't in that, that very, very particular way, way people, people might get confused. So that's, so that's why it's important, important to really, really think through who your audience is. And a really easy way to do that is just to have someone else look at your dashboard before you publish it. Show it to your friend, say, hey, tell me what's going on here. Don't explain it to them at all. To tell, tell them to look, look at, at it and see if they, they can figure out what's going on there. If, if they, they can't, can't you, might you might need to rethink, rethink some of the things that were confusing to them. Um, um, so you can see I've, I've kind of used like, like some rainbow, rainbow colors, colors here. There's, there's a lot of colors going, going on here, mostly because, because there's, there's a lot of names, names and, and I want them to be able to see the different names as different colors. But on other dashboards I've made, Kind of, kind of stick with the same, same color scheme the whole, whole time. time so we're, we're talking, talking Hello Kitty. There's going to be a lot, lot of pink. Um, and, you and you can see, see that things, things that have kind of the same, the, um, same, same value, value they're, they're, they're using, using kind of the same thing. thing. I, I use the same color scheme for them. So this word cloud, the green things are things that have a lower average cost, and the pink things are things that have a higher average cost. So, so I use that, that here, too. Here's your average price there. Here's your average, average price here. I don't, I don't want to do a bunch, bunch of different color schemes. schemes. That's, that's, that's confusing, confusing to people. people. Um, you typically want to try to minimize, minimize the, amount the amount of color schemes, schemes you have going, going on, on, period. period. Um, so, um, so if you're, you're making, making something, something really simple, simple you know, you know, I could have added color to something like this, but it was completely unnecessary. So my friend Kelly over here, she wrote, she wrote a really good article, article and, and I'll post this on the Reddit, Reddit about, about dashboard layout, layout and, design, and design. And I'm, and I'm going to post a bunch, a bunch of design things this week. This week um, because I really, I really want you to think, think like, like designers. designers. Um, and, so and so she really, really makes, makes these beautiful, beautiful dashboards, dashboards that are all kind of just one, one color. color. Because, because color isn't important to these graphs. So why add extra noise that doesn't need to be there? Um, she, also she also talks about, about I love her, she explains the, the, um, the way to kind of balance the dashboard, dashboard using, using the golden, golden rule. So this, so this is um, the golden, golden rule in design, design that it kind of takes half, half the size. And, and it, it, makes it makes sense, sense to do dashboards, do dashboards like this, because like, like I said, we read really top, top down, down left, right. right. So the, so the top, top left is something really prominent and really important. And then the things that are less important get smaller and smaller. You can, you can see, see she kind of does, does that here. The important, important thing, thing is big, big and the less, less important things, things are smaller. smaller. We, have we have probably, probably just about five, five minutes, minutes left. left. I'm, not I'm not going, going to go, go into too much, much about how you can do this. this. But I, really I really want, want you to start stretching your thinking of what, what you can do in a dashboard. So I've shown you some kind of examples of how you can put different Different, different things, things embedded into, into your dashboard. dashboard. So, so I've shown you YouTube videos, videos and I've shown you images. images. You, can you can also do things, things kind of crazy things, things. Like, like, for example, I've embedded, I've embedded a, a song here. here. So this, so this will actually like, play music. music. I click on it. You can probably hear that a little bit. Um, 
you can embed whole web pages. Something that's kind of fun to do is I like to find if I find you know mobile websites, they usually will resize to fit exactly into your dashboard. So no. this, this makes, makes less sense, sense now, now that it's April, April. but <laughs> back, back when we released this at Christmas, Christmas um, it, was it was kind of a way, way to click on a town here, and it, and would, it would look, look it up in this website. website. And, the and the way, way to that is similar to how, how we've when we worked on URL, URL elections, um, you, you can input fields field into the URL. URL. So, so I had it search for the city name. So there's a lot of things you can do with that. Something really cool, I'll show you. Another, Another thing, thing that Sarah did, did. You, can you can see, you can, you can start, start to see what her style, style looks like and how it's developed, developed over, over time. Um, she, she made a bit where she used Document Cloud, cloud. Um, so I'm, I'm sure, sure most of you have heard of it. Of. Um, and, and she embedded her documents, her documents into, into the VIS. These, these are PDFs. And what, and what she, she has here is the most sued NYPD police officers. And you can click on one of them. And you, and you can see all their cases, cases here. here. If you click on it, it, it opens up. up. Um, so, so she did that just, just by, she actually went in and, in and made links, links for all of these and then, and then put it in the data, data set. So, so the, there's, there's a lot of possibilities, possibilities on things you can embed in dashboards, dashboards and, and it makes make things really interactive and really cool when you do it. So. I think that's, that's about, about the time, time we've got. got. Any, Any last, last questions, questions before, before we, we close, close up? And I'm going, going to put, put like, like a graph kind of tutorial, tutorial on, on the website, website this week because um, the assignment is going, going to be pretty loose because, because I, want I want you to really have a lot of creative freedom, freedom for, this for this one. one. So, so I, want I want you to bring, you bring your own data, data and make a dashboard and try to incorporate um, images, images, try to, try to make, make it look, it look as custom as you can, can. Um, um, try, try to use your branding or your own newspaper, newspaper and, and do that kind of stuff. stuff. And, and if you need ideas or inspiration from the office hours, hours and I can kind of talk about, about tell you some ideas that I have on how to make it look cooler. Um, so, so that's, that's your, your that's assignment, assignment to make, make it really pretty. pretty. Okay, okay. So, so questions. So Doug to know how did she embed the docs? So, so she used, used Document, Document Cloud, Cloud which, which I believe is something that is free for all journalists. Um, so Document, Document Cloud, Cloud is a place for you to host PDFs. Um, and, and it will give you an individual URL for every PDF you're hosting. So, so when she was creating the data set, um, and she had, you know, what the case was, what the year was, how much money it was, and then a link to the thing in Document, Document Cloud. Cloud. And then, and then she, she embedded, embedded this, this web page here. So this, this is actually a separate web page um, that, that she's embedded in the, in the dashboard. dashboard. Any other questions? Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, um, it did I did kind of want to get to that today, today but we ran, ran out of time. But, but I, did I did want, want to... to I know, I know I've had, had a lot of questions, questions regarding, regarding how, to how to make things, things like the yeah, um, buttons, buttons at the top. top. Where am I? Where am I going? There we go. How to, how to make things, things like that when you have buttons, buttons at the top. top. So, so what I'm going, going to do, do uh, since I didn't get to it today, today I will make a separate video, video on how to, how to do that, do that because I get asked a lot, lot. And, and I, I do, do it all the time, time. so <laughs> I'll, I'll make a little video for you on how to do that. that. Um, and, and I'll, I'll put that on there already. Too. And Any last, last questions? Well, I have, have some of you here. here. Um, is, there is there a time this week that works better for you guys for office hours? I want to make sure that I can hit a lot of you if you need it for office hours. And I have a pretty open schedule this week. So, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday Friday, Friday, any of those days, um, I'm free pretty, pretty much all day. Of course, I'm keeping West Coast hours, hours so I know it's hard since we're kind of all over the place. Um, but I'll, I'll try, try to do some, some in the morning and some, some in the afternoon, afternoon so we can kind of get everyone. Okay, okay, great. So, so I will schedule some. some. I think, I think I'll, I'll do, do 
I'll, I'll, I think I'll probably just use Thursday, Thursday pretty, pretty much, much all day, day like, like both in the morning, morning and, and in the afternoon. afternoon. And then and I'll, I'll also do Friday, Friday afternoon, afternoon a little, little bit, too. too. Okay, okay, great, guys. guys. Um, well, well, come to the office, office hours. hours. I'll, I'll post, post those, those links to those soon. soon. And I'll post, I'll post a bunch of tutorials and what your assignment is. Once again, it's just going to be pretty loose. Just bring in your own data. Make something pretty. Brand, brand it with, with your, your own, own stuff. stuff. Um, see if you, you can, can do some cool embedding things and some actions. actions. And, and um, I'll, I'll also be asking, asking in, the in the prompt, prompt if, if your, your dashboard, dashboard is exploratory, is exploratory or explanatory, and for, and for you, you to tell me, me kind of kind of how, how you thought through, through the design. design. So It'll be a little, little bit of like an essay question. So there will be that. And I'll have more information on that in the post. All right. Take care, you guys. Thanks, Thanks for coming. coming.